um i knew i didn't want to come back i didn't want to um, stay in the us why didn't i want to stay in the us one i'm very patriotic i wear this band with the indian flag on my hand i've been I wearing it that. for cool. the last 13 years wow. i wear it every day between the age of 21 to 24 i met 150 plus entrepreneurs the best entrepreneurs in it wow. right and i believed in one thing right we are privileged people we need to do something with it and what do we need to do we need to come back our country and make some impact right so happy to hear that <laughs> 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 Hey Arjun so you studied in a prestigious university Ivy League level in the US uh you you studied school in Ambani school in India privileged life you built a brand from scratch um and sold it for 100 crores net actually made that cash valuation bahut log bolte hai but an actual exit was done and you were cash rich bhai abhi kitna paisa kamata hai yaar i i'll 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 step back first right, right. i think people sometimes ask me the question Okay, so one fine day, all of this capital came into the bank account, and then what happened? What changed? Right, that's a important question to answer. And I think for us, when the capital came in the bank, right, it it was a amazing feeling. I remember I was at my dad's office. By this time, we had left Doctor Vedi. I said we were running the business. I was at my dad's office, and I remember just um, a sense of. lots of weight going off my chest a sense of relief a sense of okay we actually did it like until it happens it doesn't happen and it's happened and that feeling lasted for that day after that was done i think nothing changed in life right the only big thing i would say that changed for me was that i was able to buy a house in the same building that my parents live um and that was a big accomplishment for me otherwise zero changes in life really i upgraded my car i was in a hyundai creta uh-huh. i uh, went to buy a hector mg hector and then uh, i saw an ev and i said if i am working in vc and in tech i better be driving an ev <laughs> so i upgraded my car slightly because i remember at that time my dad was like my dad is very passionate about cars mm. and so he was like um, and now let's get you a nice car this that whatever uh, and i'm obviously always but you never thought of buying a super car or something no, so so uh, i'll tell you the story right so he said chalo we'll go and buy a nice car and stuff uh, i said theek hai so i went with him to the showrooms of these luxury car company see i've bought only one car in my life okay hyundai creta uske pehle my parents had given me a honda jazz small car and then eventually when i started a company i said yaar at least i should have a car of my own and all of that तो वी वेंट टू दीज लग्जरी कार शोरूम्स एंड आई डेंट नो हाउ मच दीज कार्स कॉस्ट एंड सो वेन आई सॉ द प्राइस आई वॉज लाइक आई कैन डू फिफ्टीन एंजल इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द अमाउंट आई स्पेंड ऑन दिस कार एंड सो वॉट आई रियलाइज देन वॉज आई डोंट अस्क्राइब वैल्यू टू दैट राइट आई डोंट एक्चुअली इट डजन एक्साइट मी और एनैमर मी me as a person and by the way no disrespect to someone like my dad or other people who really love cars and and really value cars etc all of that for me it didn't really make a difference it wasn't something which exciting. which cars are these you went to the jaguars the mercedes the audis porsche mercedes bmw etc all of that which But is yeah. the most shocking sticker price ah oh. देखा भी नहीं एक के बाद आई वॉज नॉट इवन इंटरेस्टेड इन इज ओवर सो यू डेंट एक्सप्लोर इट या आई डेंट इवन एक्सप्लोर आई डेंट इवन सिट इन द कार माई डैड सेट सी द कार सी द एक्सपीरियंस सी ऑल ऑफ दिस बट इंटरेस्ट ही नहीं था आई सर आई डोंट अस्क्राइब वैल्यू टू दिस कार फॉर मी इज पॉइंट ए टू पॉइंट बी फाइन आई नीड सम लेवल ऑफ कम्फर्ट बट दैट्स इट and so i'm okay with what i have i'm very happy with what i have i proudly you know i go for a meeting with someone and their luxury car drives up i'm like look at my ev check out my ev look mm. at this car it drives so it was so mental peace for you that means as soon as that 100 crores came in your account it was mental it sounds like that right like now uh, it was relief and a sense mm. of accomplishment mm. that hey by the way i'm able to do what i set out to do what was in my mind what we had planned to do and look we didn't build this company to exit right? yeah, we yeah. decided to exit that whole process of completing it getting that sense of accomplishment getting that sense of pride with your parents with your grandmom that you've actually done this mm. that was beautiful but the money didn't really change my life as such right this is nice right like even i came to i flew to delhi yesterday yeah i flew in economy i paid for the exit row seat but i flew in economy and that's that's like and that's it me, yeah. no first class 
फर्स्ट क्लास छोड़ो हमारे इंडियन प्लेन्स में फर्स्ट क्लास का नहीं मतलब अब्रॉड जाते हो तो प्रीमियम इकोनॉमी नो आई आई नेवर फ्लाई अम बिजनेस क्लास इवन इफ आई एम गोइंग अब्रॉड आई एम नॉट फ्लाइंग बिजनेस क्लास सो दिस इज नाइस राइट लाइक even after you had that financial freedom people say now i will do what i want but you continue to do what you want so maybe that older just adage ki do what you want and you will be successful it's, it's sort of true right it's so i built a company that my that took forward my grandfather's legacy right mm. and we we will talk about that later but there's one thing that was ingrained in me by my grandfather he mm. was one of india's most successful ayurvedic doctors he used to see 300 to 350 patients a day He had twelve thousand patients writing to him via post wow. on a monthly basis. Mm. He was one of India's highest paying tax, highest tax paying doctors at one point of time. Right. Every day, he went to his clinic mm. in a white safari suit ah. with black shoes, mm. um, a Titan watch, right, which he had got customized with his company name in it. Oh, nice! It like a five hundred one thousand rupee Titan watch. Um, I know. Five rupee red pen in his pocket at all times, and when I, you know, in school when you go from I think it was like fifth, fourth, four, fourth to fifth grade or something, you mm. move from pencil to pen. Yeah, right. And so he was really happy that I had moved to pen. Huh. And that time he gave me this Schaefer pen. Oh yeah, Schaefer pen was like oh yeah yeah. My dad loves it too. Above Parker, right? Yeah, it was correct, like correct, expensive. Correct. I don't know, maybe two thousand, five thousand rupee correct. a pen. He proudly gave it to me. It was in this box, and it had like that pillow. You lost it, right? Green color velvet <laughs> pillow. याद नहीं अभी रखा था अच्छे अच्छे से. So I told him, I was like, you are giving me the Schaefer pen, but you are going to a clinic every day with a five rupee red pen. And he said, every day when I go to the clinic and I see this five rupee red pen, it reminds me where I came from. Humility is the most important characteristic. ये सबका स्टोरी ना समन बिकम्स लाइक रियली सक्सेसफुल एंड देर लाइक करोला में जा रहे हैं पांच रुपए का पेन है लाइक एंड ऑल लाइक पीपल हु डोंट हैव मनी लाइक नहीं मेरे को फरारी चाहिए नहीं बट आई टेल यू माय ग्रैंडफादर लिव्ड दिस लाइफ नॉट जस्ट टू से ही लिव्ड इट व्हेन टाटा नैनो केम ही वाज द मोस्ट एक्साइटेड ही बॉट टू टाटा नैनोस ही लव्ड इट राइट आई थिंक दैट सो सो ही यूज्ड टू से वन थिंग राइट ही सेड इफ इट कम्स Right, be happy it came, but be okay to live without it as well. So, and and my dad lived by this as well. So, when I was young, I, I love sports, right? So we used to go every summer, um, or or at least some years we'd go to London in the summer, right? And there's this at at that time it used to be the luxury sports store of the world, maybe called Lily White's. Now it's become a <laughs> Sadly, a highly discounted sports store. But at that time, it was this like wooden flooring and beautiful chandeliers, six stories sports store just um, outside uh, um, Leicester Square, and it was like an experience for my brother and I, right, to go there and buy our Grey Nichols gloves and our Grey Nichols pads, and we'd buy our football and stuff like that. And and then at some point, for the few years, I like basketball, right. And NBA basketball is this ball called Spalding. Now I used to play with a Costco ball, and I had gone and bought my cricket stuff and my football stuff, and then I told my dad I want the Spalding basketball as well. And he said, "Boss, you barely play basketball. Why do you want the Spalding basketball?" I said, "No, yar, shock hai. Spalding basketball chahiye mujhe." And we left that store, um, and I just was like, "I can't believe you didn't give me the Spalding basketball. I can't believe you didn't give me the Spalding basketball." And then at some point, my dad stopped and he said. Let's go back to the store, and we'll get the Spalding basketball. It was some twenty pounds or something like that, twenty-five pounds. So, in rupees, must be in two thousand rupees or something. It's like I don't care about the amount, right? I'll get you the ball because today we can afford to get that ball. But tomorrow, if, and I'm not saying it will happen, but if we can't afford to get that ball, you have to be okay with it and not be unhappy about it. Did you understand this back then? And and it was a deep thought, and mm. the action was getting me that ball. Mm. But the thought was, today I'm giving you the ball. Tomorrow, if something happens and I and we can't buy that ball, you have to be okay with it, right? Because he said, it comes and goes, and that should not determine your happiness. But did you understand this as a child back then, or you just said, "Ha, Papa, ठीक है मुझे ball दे दो." I understood because he gave me the ball. <laughs> Had he not given me the ball, it was just how old were you? Right? When was this? Must be like ten, eleven years old. You were going to school in Mumbai. 
This was the Ambani school. No, I was in a school called Cathedral before. Cathedral. Okay. Eleventh and twelfth, I moved to the Ambani school for my international curriculum. And this is, okay, this is IB, was it? I did eleventh and twelfth IB. Till then, I was ICSE. Okay. Um, so uh, that was. This is a privileged school, is it? I'm not from Bombay, so I don't know. And and okay, so who were like your classmates and? Yeah, I would say that I. Aisa kuch nahi. I, I no, I would say that I'm not going to deny that I didn't grow up in comfort. I grew up in comfort, and and um, I think. Uh, I was fortunate to live the life that I lived, um, and all of that. But I think with all that comfort, there was an important part of values and value for money, which was really important, right? Like you can't just go spend everything that you have. No, and um, maybe I went a little bit more on my granddad, uh, but he was extremely conscious, like. Uh, so my dad is in the jewelry and watch business. Right? Okay. And so every year it's I, one shop. I'm sorry. I just want to understand your dad's business. No, it's not one shop. It's two stores. Okay. One in Bombay, one in Delhi. We have a luxury watch business with one store, and then there's a B two B side of the business which supplies. I notice you're not wearing a luxury watch. <laughs> I'll tell the story of this watch. Okay, cool. Well. Uh, so every year, and it just recently stopped, but it was the largest jewelry and watch show in the world. Huh? Um, called Basel World. Okay, happened in Basel in Switzerland, hmm. and um, my granddad used to accompany my dad for this trip. Hmm. Just he would go with my dad, hmm. and uh, and then when my granddad would go with my dad, I would have to go to the clinic at the end of the day and collect the cash, um, whatever was collected at the at, at the day, right? Whatever the patients paid for the medicine, etc. All of that, and my granddad insisted to fly economy even at age sixty five, seventy. I will fly economy. I will not go any other. I will only fly economy. And dad, dad would fly with my granddad. Right? <laughs> he would have to. Like, see he you later. Say, I'll business, see you. I'm business. I'm business. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't say, "I'll see you later." Right? Uh, my granddad insisted. But if you think about the thought, right? He's like, "Yeah, I'm not ascribing three x, four x the value." But you didn't know person. you were well off when you were a child, right? Like, I don't think kids really notice these things. As but we children. knew we had comfort. You knew that. We knew we had comfort. Okay. If you're enjoying the podcast so far, you love the two-day experience. It's pretty simple. I think the internet allows and is an equalizing force for adult education. If you want to learn about business and finance, there is no place to do it effectively. So we have a free program that you can apply for that happens every single weekend. You can learn business skills, trading skills, even personal finance and investing. The only thing is, not everyone gets in. We think only the gritty people should get in. That's why only thirty percent are allowed to attend these sessions, and these sessions are live, done in a community with proof of work. No lectures, I promise. You will actually build something to learn any of these skills. So, if you find it interesting, click on the link in the description. I hope to see you this weekend. Now. On to the podcast. So, what were your dreams and like, what did you want in the future? Like, go back to class ten, twelve. Like, what did my future? Me, ye karunga. Um, I'm like a lot of us think, yar, me itna paisa kamaunga, ya ye job karunga, ya I like sports, I want to become a sports person. Yeah, I always wanted to be a sports person growing up. To be mm -hmm. honest, uh, but I have a hand-eye coordination problem, <laughs> so I always suck. But you were good. Ajay, you sucked at sports. Ah, uh, look, I would say that in life, I learned that I don't get anything easy. there are hard workers and smart workers i could not be the smart worker so i had to be the hard worker right so i put in lots of effort as compared to other people sports me yaar kya hota hai like when you're young i was on so i had asthma growing up right and and that's that's what convinced me or or uh, made me get into ayurveda my dada cured me of asthma so i couldn't play cricket and football growing up because there was too much dust so i would play golf and squash now i was playing squash before everybody was playing squash I started playing squash at age six, seven, right? Nobody was playing squash at that age. But I was twelve, thirteen. I was pretty decent at squash. Mm. But then there would be people who would come play six months and become better than me and beat me, right? Because their hand-eye coordination was just much better. <laughs> so I always wanted to be a sports person. But then after trying out for the football team like six times and never making it, and and you stop, stop trying. No, I kept playing, yar. I didn't stop playing. But I just knew that like a career will not be made. Hundred percent will not be made. A career. And by the way, I still play a lot of sport, right? So we have a big cricket league happening in our building. Um, I live in a building with a lot of passionate cricketers. So we have a equivalent of IPL. There's teams. There's auctions, etc. Oh, and that. So that's at the end of Feb. I play football a lot, and um, I realized that I cannot match people in talent. Um, so I became. I, I run. Right? I run half marathons and all of that. And I run pretty often, three times a week. So I said, if I can't match people in talent. 
I'll ensure that I can run more than anybody else on the football field. Um, and so I just got stamina more than anybody else. Now we are sort of just on the other side of 30. And so people are not, people around me may not be as fit. And so I can last more than anybody else in the football game for sure. That's always a good thing. <laughs> uh, so tell me after uh, so after school what happened college kahan gaye fir I went to college in the US I went to Brown University so I want to understand your relationship with money I'm sorry I keep getting back to there but I think so there's basically... a funny story with the relationship with money in college as well okay go ahead um, I used to spend a lot of time with my granddad after I was cured with asthma um He cured you of as- asthma. Yeah, he cured me of asthma after 14 years of treatment. Mm-hmm. By age 15 and a half, 16 and a half, cured of asthma. I started playing cricket again seriously, mm-hmm. and I got made the captain of my school cricket team um, in Ambani School. I was the captain of the team, and so it was a big moment for me in my life. It wasn't a great team. Honestly, we played all of four games. <laughs> we won two and we lost two, or something like that. Four or five games played. Um, but so when I went to college. I promised my granddad I'll study biotechnology and come back and take on the Ayurveda legacy. So he said he'll pay for my education. Okay. Um, and I went to college and I realized that bio, 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 karna hai ke chem karna hai. If you want to do bio or chem, you have to spend four hours in a lab every week. As a seventeen and a half year old, I wasn't interested in spending four hours in a lab. And so after the first year, I switched to economics and politics. And my dad stopped paying. He told my dad, "You pay for this now." He's not studying biochemistry, biotechnology, so I'm not paying for the education. Um, but I think one thing which was ingrained in us at that time was, other than our college fees, we were given money for the entire semester in the beginning of the semester, and that equated to seven hundred fifty US dollars. Okay, that's what I was given for the semester, and I had to manage. So that was your world. Yes. And काम तो बाहर कर नहीं सकते हैं तो बस यही था. करते थे. करते थे क्या? We were ha- we had a limit of some. um i think it was 20 hours a month um with our visa so i was a football ref i used to get paid 8 dollars an hour we had this intramural football league so we had a team also right. but when my team was not playing i was a ref right. so i'd get paid 8 dollars an hour and i'd go ref games and all of that it was 750 and my granddad i remember i remember talking to my granddad once in campus in the first year mm-hmm. and uh, it was snowing yeah. and i was like Trudging through the snow to get to the sports facility to ref my game, and he was like firing my parents, saying, "Eight dollars an hour is what he's earning, and he's going through all of this. Have we sent him to study or earn money? क्या करेगा eight dollars per hour के लिए? Why you letting him work?" And my dad was like, "No, he'll work. If he wants to work, he'll work." So, so that that was college. Anything else uh, that happened at that time? No, any, I, I, any interesting jobs you picked apart from the ref job? Uh, we did a startup as well in college, actually. Oh, that's always um, nice. Huh. So, like. We were international students, um, and we hated the dining halls in college. Okay. So um, after the first year, I I got off the meal plan because of the food. The food was not great, right? right honestly, um, and so I got off the meal plan in college. An average meal, if you equate per meal what you're paying on the meal plan, it was seven and a half US dollars. You're paying for each meal. Huh? Like meal plan के लिए आप college को pay करते हो ना? Correct. So you pay in the beginning of the semester or whatever. I'd pay seven and a half dollars per meal. the lots of restaurants in and around our campus and it would work out to about 10 11 a meal if you eat outside in the restaurant if you have just one appetizer one main course dessert drink or whatever leave mm-hmm. that aside one appetizer one main course so significantly 10, more 10 11 significantly more right but the food quality was 10x better than got it huh? so we had a startup called munch card where we said we will bridge the gap between the college meal plan and the restaurant meals oh. by getting the restaurants on board telling them to give a discount to the students 15 to 20% so that $10 11 becomes $8 $9 right which is very close then um we'll get the restaurants more student traffic yeah we'll give the students discounts unka so volume badega right and we'll make a take rate on every transaction um and ha huh, we got like some 40 restaurants we got it was one fourth or one fifth of brown campus to buy the card now they were not only using the card sure everyone ate out at some But point this is cool man you found a gap in the market you knew it was an actual need uh, and what happened us uske baad is it yeah, still running someone maybe, else is running uh, it so uh, basically this was only running on our campus hmm. and we tried to do it on other campuses but then all of us were graduating or two of us were graduating um and uh, i thought was not going to stay in the us after my graduation you were clear about that agar job milti nahi 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 kaam job try nahi kiya honestly 
जॉब की कोई अपॉर्चुनिटीज थे एट बिग कंसल्टिंग फॉर्म से बट ट्राई नहीं किया बिकॉज आई टेल यू दैट आफ्टर सो हाँ वी वी रियलाइज दैट वी आर नॉट गोन स्टे एंड इफ यू हैव टू एक्सपैंड आउटसाइड आर कैंपस दैट्स अ डिफरेंट बॉल गेम तो we found someone who bought the tech and and we handed over to that person chicago based investor could they there um i knew i didn't want to come back i didn't want to um, stay in the us why didn't i want to stay in the us one i'm very patriotic i wear this band with the indian flag on my hand i've been I wearing it that. for the last 13 years i wear it every day um and i believed in one thing right we are privileged people we have access to opportunities and comforts that other people don't have in our country and so even if it's working in the private sector the knowledge education and exposure that we have we need to do something with it and what do we need to do we need to come back our country and make some impact right so happy to hear this i'm not saying that i went to um work in an impact investing organization or an ngo no i'm i'm honest i worked in the capitalist economy of india but i i made impact or or i had the opportunity to make impact 100% that exposure and education that i got um i think it was uh, it was clear to me that i want to do it The other selfish reason was, look, I spent four years in the U.S. for my undergrad. I had an amazing time, an unbelievable time. I genuinely lived it up, and lived it up was the first product I launched at Doctor Vedya's. But I genuinely lived it up. I loved my four years in college. I, 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 my wife may not be as happy that I'm saying this, but it was the best four years of my life <laughs> by far. <laughs> uh, and so, if you live four years outside of India for college, you then work two to three years in the developed world or um the west right us or maybe or whatever and then eventually the goal would be if i'm working in the professional world do an mba right that's also two years to 8 9 10 saal if you live outside of india 8 9 10 years and then you come back to india adjusting back to the working environment the life hmm. the infrastructure the hmm. problems the challenges and the opportunities is very difficult right and so i gave myself a head start by coming back to india because All the people who came back three, four years later, they have to learn all of this, unlearn what they learned. Where is my water bottle? <laughs> and and not just that, yeah. Like there is, I think there's lots of opportunity in the chaos in India. Hmm. But you have to be okay with that yeah. and accept that. Hey, I was coming to see you at nine a.m. today, and my map said forty minutes. Um, when I checked it, twenty minutes before I left, but it took me one hour to reach, and that's okay, yeah. You understood it. I understood it. We were fine abroad, with it, right? Abroad, it's not acceptable. No, I remember we had gone for a holiday to Germany, and we were in Berlin, and we were taking a bus, and the bus was one minute late, and people around us were like looking at their watches, like going, "Oh my God, what's happening?" All of that one minute. Dude, late. the same thing happened. We were in Italy. We were going to see uh, what's that thing that that leans, leaning tower the leaning Pisa. tower of Pisa. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we went out for a walk, and they said, "See you in twenty minutes." And he said, "Ha, bees, pachis minute." <laughs> and we were five minutes late, and everyone was standing outside the bus. There were Japanese there, which is the worst of the lot, because you know they're super punctual, and a bunch of Europeans. And they were like, "The sings, the sings! Oh my God, we were so worried about you. It's been five whole minutes." <laughs> I said, five minutes." <laughs> <laughs> But I really appreciated that they really care. It's not that I don't. Even in India, I'm no, always way, on time. There is a good reason. Reason to be on time, yeah, and yeah. to be punctual, totally but, agree. But I'm just saying that there is calm in the chaos, right? And there is opportunity in the chaos, and to be able to spot that opportunity takes a different mindset. Yeah, it takes a different mindset. Okay, so after college, you came back to India. Chaos, tha, got it. Uh, what was your first job? I worked uh, as an analyst at a private equity fund, consumer focused private equity fund, and they managed a lot of money. Ha, they managed a lot of money. Uh, I went to an Ivy League college. My parents spent. A lot of money on two crore rupees, maybe two crore <laughs> rupees on my education, and I got an internship at this private equity fund. You became um, an intern. I became an intern, um, and I was earning forty thousand rupees a month. You were okay with this? I was okay with it. I wasn't okay with it. Okay, I wasn't okay with it. Um, I always felt, "Yar, itna education kia hai." Graduated uh-huh. college the four point oh. I was Phi Beta Kappa, top one percent of students in the US at that time. Part of the honor society, etc. All of that. But I knew I wanted to be back in India, and I loved the job profile. Right. Right. To be a economics and politics graduate who got a job in private equity straight from college is a big, big thing. Uh, but obviously, they weren't hiring undergrads. Sure. Right? So, I think I was not okay. But I think my family really supported. My dad was like, "Go for it because the job profile is amazing." You have three months or six months. Make yourself indispensable in the role mm-hmm. that you are in. Mm-hmm. And they gave me e-commerce. 
um saying you're the youngest member of the team work on e-commerce and i got really lucky that e-commerce was just taking off in india selling stuff on the internet hmm what a novel idea <laughs> you know in in 2013 and 14 hmm. we genuinely would ask questions hmm. like do you think indians will buy clothes online Correct. or do we want touch yeah, and feel yeah. because the world was a very different place yeah, yeah, yeah. apple laptops were selling because of 30% discount this was discount. when 2000 2000 13 August I started I just want to say one line over here we I started something called market scientist back then which is basically me and just me making a blog and we used to do online classes okay and I used to call people be like nahi nahi class online hoga internet pe aap jaoge main aapko link bhejunga go to webinar ka people just didn't have this concept ki online kuch ho sakta hai now we just call it see you and you assume it's a zoom call yeah, it's yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. right see you yeah see you and it's a zoom call it's Correct. crazy dude yeah, so it was a different world yeah, yeah. i think um, internet was here but commerce was just beginning and i remember those questions i asked myself like existential question like will indians pay to stream music I remember speaking to savan at that time will indians buy you met savan at that time at that time which companies did you meet 2013 14 yeah i would have met mintra jabong pepper fry fuck yeah blue stone zivame ha ye sab companies you met the founders um, ha shop clues um quicker do they all had interesting companies. outcomes actually um, at that time it was called health cart mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like health cart and one mg yeah, yeah. were yeah, yeah. one company so health cart Dude, this is invaluable right like how many people would have met these guys way back then yeah, that's so, crazy so i'll tell you what was amazing right the great jo- the great part about having a private equity card mm. and because i was an intern they didn't even put an analyst on the card it kuch nahi likha tha just blank card tha arjun vedya l capital <laughs> so i could Sounds be the, like partner yeah, i could be the partner <laughs> right that, so that that gave me tremendous exposure think about it at, between the age of 21 to 24 i met a 150 plus entrepreneurs across e-commerce cards bikes apparel lifestyle retail food and beverage restaurants wines and spirits watches and jewelry the best entrepreneurs in it wow. right and that exposure yeah. was just unbelievable and the one thing i did was i said i'm a sponge here mm. i have all of this exposure i get to meet all of these people my job is so amazing that i get to meet all of these people let me learn as much as i can from these people right 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 and at that age those kind of people that i got to meet was just amazing It was just just out of this world. Okay, then we have to take a shortcut straight to how you did your brand because now I want to see how you actually took some of this inspiration, information, etc., and built your own brand, Doctor Vedas. But I have a question, dude. Bura ni mana se. So here's the thing, right? Your grandfather built Doctor Vedas. Unka formulation tha, as far as I understand, unka sab kuch tha, and then you sold it for a hundred crores. Like like is okay. Chal, I'll start with the first question Achha, and then I'll get to the okay. I'll get to the second one. Um, and I think, by the way, the second question you asked me, a lot of people have asked me. Achha, right? so it's I, fine. <laughs> I have my answer ready. Achha, uh, I think private equity. Say honestly, if I tell you what I did gain was experience and knowledge of meeting all of these founders, right? Um, and exposure to what a good founder may look like. Hmm. That's it. It stops there, because the hustle of an entrepreneur. Private equity. You get to the office. You read the newspaper. You read the news. You read your emails, and 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 you continue with the day, right? And there's There are days when it's crazy and it's manic and it's wild, but there are also days when it's calm. Hmm. As an entrepreneur, there's no days when yeah, it's calm. No calm, right? Um, and so I had to unlearn a lot of that. I get to the office, I can read the newspaper. Nahi hoga. Three things have broken by the time I open my eyes and my phone. I see my phone, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I think l- few skills I learned and few skills I had to unlearn. Hmm. On the second question now, the more interesting question. Okay, right? okay. See, Doctor Vedya's. And Vedya, my last name means Ayurvedic doctor. It's hmm. been in our family for 150 years as a legacy. Amazing. But the legacy of our business was not a business. It okay. was one Ayurvedic clinic that my great grandfather used to run. My grandfather used to run. Okay. There was no business at all. The formulations, the IP, all of this was passed down from generation to generation. It is a practice. So It I is... inherited a large repository hmm. of formulations and IP, hmm. and a very strong Ayurvedic practice with a few thousand customers, maybe a lakh customers. But there was no brand. Knowing what works, what doesn't. Work products, tha. products were good. Hmm. There was no brand. Hmm. There was no logo. There was no packaging, and there was no sales channel outside of the clinic. Interesting. What was it? It's just and a so clinic. It was one clinic that, towards the end Which of my grandfather's fit. life, used to see eighty patients a day. Um, my grandfather practiced there till one month before he passed away, um, and there was huge loyalty towards my grandfather's name. The products worked. Hmm. I knew the products worked, hmm. but that's where it ended. 
and yes i had a small manufacturing facility that my grandfather had set up hmm. to manufacture the products for his clinic hmm. that's where it ended so um, basically you built the brand from scratch, from scratch. the name and you used the uh, name was okay I'm, the name hmm. was not so creative it was my grandfather's no, name no but it's a bu- it's a perfect name it's actually perfect i love that name it's a perfect name you didn't call it maverick ayurveda and i would have hated it and the the most amazing part was we got the trademark dr vedyas because vedya means ayurvedic doctor but we got the trademark of dr vedya oh int- i didn't know that actually shit <laughs> so this dr vedya is new age ayurveda so what was the first product then the first product was live it up live it up a 25 year old arjun didn't want to sell diabetes arthritis asthma which is what my dad used to sell a lot of so 25 year old arjun repackaged the liver protector as a hangover product and live it up was the first product i launched i first tested it on friends family it so what was it have it before you drink have it before you drink wake up fresh in the morning still a, still my favorite product that i launched still a, the most effective hangover product i can say publicly on this platform yeah. in the market test me test the product and tell me what do you think product sell sells obviously but uh, you know i really enjoyed it by the way i would go to restaurants bars clubs pubs lounges wine shops we sampled 250000 package of the product in the first year wow and the best form of marketing was sampling because it works yeah i can tell you if you have two capsules before you drink you will wake up fresh in the morning uh but the what i didn't realize was just because it was a exciting product for me that doesn't mean it was a exciting business mm-hmm. the business never scaled more than 10 20 lakhs a month the business could not scale right? the entire because, business no the hangover the product, hangover business, product right? okay uh, because the market was limited for this product during wedding season we'd sell a lot because wedding planners would buy it put in the hangover kits but it stopped at some point oh, interesting right? wedding planners would buy it ha huh, we did a very cool thing actually nice. we used to put the wedding hashtag on the packet oh what what was the hashtag jo bhi wedding ka hashtag hai uh-huh. we would personalize the package with the wedding hashtag oh, so damn. it became a rage in weddings and stuff like that and it's a great referral like you'll tell your friend about it man of course like, you also can get your name uh-huh. on it uh-huh. and stuff like that ha uh-huh. to ye hua but very quickly i realized that this business will stop and so when we launched doctorvedias.com the first thing we did was in november 2017 when we decided to become a digital first brand that time d2c didn't exist as a term when we decided to become a digital first brand and we launched the the website we decided ke um we will talk to every customer and what we realized then is the customers were not urban niche elite customers 82% of our customers were coming from outside the top 10 cities 70% of them didn't speak english at all and so we had to pivot the strategy completely to say doctor whether is a brand that's not made for just bombay delhi bangalore hyderabad chennai pune doctor whether is a brand made for anantnag trichy muzaffarnagar and imphal and so our ads in english are irrelevant correct hindi english and vernacular advertising makes sense correct and that's what you did and that's what we did and then eventually after the first year november 2017 to 18 we reached from 0 to 50 orders a day how did you get that first 100 orders we put the products out uh-huh. we tested a bunch of things through digital marketing we learned e-commerce ourselves right, right. we learned shopify how to build a website we learned facebook advertising google advertising we learned warehousing logistics customer service speaking to all the customers understanding the customer problems and then we reached from 0 to 50 orders a day how many people were working year. how many people were working we were about 30 people by then okay um But, but included, you were doing everything. But that included the factory also. Unko hata do. Unko hata do. Maybe twelve people, thirteen hmm. people. Then we hit fifty orders a day in November twenty eighteen at a customer acquisition cost of thirty percent of average order value, so seventy five percent gross margin in the business. I remember once a mentor had told me it'll take a lot of time or some time to hit product market fit. Hmm. But when you hit product market fit with the D two C brand, it just zooms. Wait for that inflection point, and when you hit that inflection point, be ready for a ride. And for us, that was the right. Fifty orders a day. We said this business can scale. Yeah. We started scaling. We raised a round of capital in June 2019. How much was that? We raised two million dollars primary in the business. Five million dollars, but some of it was secondary. Right. So two million dollars, about fifteen CR went into the business. From there, we went from fifty to five thousand orders a day. How digital marketing? Two million transacting customers wow. across sixteen and a half thousand pin codes. Just because once we had product market fit, just did the same and more and more and more and more. Hmm. Hmm. We launched more products. We did more marketing we engaged further with our customers we built retention retention built word of mouth mm. word of mouth built network effect products started selling on amazon automatically from our website and it just zoomed tell me again you went from 50 orders to how much in how 5000 orders a day in 2 years wow and then this and was and covid happened in between oh dude but covid but that was, was good, good for you right covid was good for us is online look it was good for ayurveda because one we were a ayurveda company government was promoting ayurveda two we were online three we were leaders in the online space already right so it helped us and the business grew but emotionally physically running a business through the early part of covid was one of the toughest things i've done in my life how did i was working function? in the 
factory function and i honestly couldn't i couldn't even go to the factory because my factory was 3 and 1/2 hours from bombay in a union territory of dadra nagar haveli and silvasa hmm. so i could not even go because Correct. restrictions to travel between Correct. borders state borders etc over there so my factory team credit to them they managed the factory but the warehouse i managed so trisha my wife me two three members of our team my brother left his luxury jewel luxury watch business to come and work with us in the warehouse and we packed the orders ourselves amazing and the most actually crazy experience was our warehouse building was very strict about not allowing the tempo to come in with our products so every second day 750 kg of stock would come at the gate and you would go. unload the tempo ourselves oh. use the trolleys and move it for me it was okay 6 10 kg boxes trisha to learn to lift 6 10 kg boxes by the end of which she could lift it Dude, what what do you think is the one thing you learned from all of this? Like before the sale happened, I'm still talking about the scaling phase. Like, yeah, the, my question is: Is there one silver bullet? Oh, three learnings, yeah. Hmm. One, um, startups look very glamorous, exciting, unicorns, funding rounds, newspaper articles from the outside, getting on platforms like yours, having a conversation. Uh, but had i been a founder my phone would have been on fire right now and i'd have to get out of this and then suddenly just change my mind into managing whatever's gone crazy there right and and i'll give you an example um in gujarati we have this thing called uh, lagan lakhwanu kankotri writing ceremony of the wedding right and um so i was sitting down for the ceremony we got married while both of us were running dr vedyas that's crazy uh, we were engaged and then she joined the business So we had the ceremony. Trisha was in the office. I was at home because it was just for my family. Um, and my factory manager called me three times as I was sitting down for the puja. So I knew there was something important. So I got up and I, I took his call. He said we've lost power in the factory, and uh, it'll take two three days to resume the power. And we had a huge sale coming up, right? We had to sit through that puja, thinking about thinking about this, right? And so I think. the hallmark of a good founder and i wouldn't say i'm a i'm a great founder uh, i was a decent founder because i didn't know how to do it as well but the best founders do it fight failure with grit and resilience and just get up and fight back every day right i think that's characteristic number 1 or learning number 1 number 2 is you can't do it alone um as much as we thought we could work 16 hours a day and manage everything ourselves you're nothing without an empowered team and startup growth doesn't compound without an empowered team right, right? so that's point number 3 and uh, point number 2 and point number 3 is not relevant for for me because i didn't do this but lots of young people say i'm doing my startup part time when it scales and i'll Correct. i'll do it and i'll quit my job and stuff startups are not part time you have to be in or you're out you can't be slightly pregnant with entrepreneurship yeah, if you're yeah. in you're in if you're out you're out you're it's out. okay to be out but if yeah. you're in you're in absolutely i have a friend who did this and it just doesn't work man doesn't work. it doesn't work like it it will not lead to a decent outcome yeah. super Cool. So, Abhi, what are you doing, Abhi? What's your? Do you have a job? You starting a new company? What are you doing? Yeah, I run a VC fund now, um, called V Three Ventures. It's a partnership uh, um, with Vol Invest. Vol Invest is a large single LP evergreen fund structure based out of Belgium that invests in consumer. LP means that's the main guy funding this actually correct. this thing, so, the limited partner. Correct. So they have been investing in consumer for twenty five years now, in India. Um, Investors in some of the most iconic consumer brands: Sula, Viva, Pigamia, Purple, Wakefit, Byju's, Heads Up for Tails, um, all of these businesses. But they had more growth stage investments, mm. and so we wanted to start an early stage investing vehicle. And the idea was to partner with ex founders who have built and sold consumer businesses to lead the strategies. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> and so I I run it in India, and I have a colleague uh, Lopo who runs the equivalent in Europe. Okay. Is out of London. How much do you manage? Right now we have thirty million dollars. Okay, and then once this ends, there'll be another. There'll be more capital available. So we do one to five million dollar investments across the consumer landscape. So brands, tech, enablers, and platforms. Slightly and wider stage? than just what's consumer. What's the stage? Brands. Like these have some traction. I would say they are um, pre-series A, series A opportunities. Hmm. Um, have looked at a few seed deals as well, but a little bit of traction, not idea stage, but after idea stage. Ha, but there is a business running actually. There is a business running. Tell me about some of the deals. So we did. Uh, I, I, as I said, Doctor Vedya's was a company built outside the top ten cities, right? It was a Bharat opportunity. So the first deal we did is a very interesting company called Kuku FM. It's Love India's it. largest uh, vernacular podcast platform. They have now two point three million plus paid subscribers, who spend a lot of time on this app, learning stuff like 
सेल्फ हेल्प सेल्फ इम्प्रूवमेंट बुक समरीज रिव्यूज आई बाई द वे लॉन्च अ प्रोग्राम ऑन कोको एफ एम ओके कॉल कैसे बेचे अपने प्रोडक्ट ऑनलाइन टीचिंग ई कॉमर्स दे हैव या summaries of books like rich dad poor dad and and very famous books That's like that they have fiction stuff as well right they have say. they have fiction rat ke bara baj rahe the as uh, they have fiction but it's more the self help and self improvement okay, kind so of content non, okay a lot of it is non fiction that means a lot of it is non fiction as well hmm. um and i was just so this company was interesting actually because i used to host a podcast on coco fm on ayurveda back in the days and so before i knew before you invest oh wow in dr vedya's days we had a podcast called daily ayurvedic tips hmm. we would do one to two minute tips on ayurveda on these whatsapp groups hmm. opt in whatsapp groups there are 25000 people whatsapp groups ha huh. is so, that what coco fm was no 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 dr vedya's had um if you wanted one tip from us on a daily basis you opted into these whatsapp groups there are 100 whatsapp groups running at that time and every day between 7 and 9 we'd give you one tip on ayurveda 6 out of the 7 days of the week would be non branded one day would be branded either on a product on a consultation on a service etc but there would be 25000 people on a daily basis saw our logo on their amazing, phone amazing amazing and so i used to also whatever i put as the tip hmm. i would record it in hindi and put it on coco fm and we got great traction from that so that's how i knew the company before i sort of even went for the investment yeah, the founders can... by the way didn't know about this Achha, they didn't know this they didn't know it was one of the guys who were doing something on coco fm and the other company we've done is eka care uh, okay. which is a very interesting company started by the founding team of goai bibo who helped work on covin with the government as volunteer architects in the pandemic oh interesting um, and then the government is building a digital health stack like we have upi like we have aadhar there is a digital health stack being built called abdm where every indian has their own national health id um and a qr code and eventually unifying this or being the private player on this through patient health record management through managing of doctors clinics through digital and eventually so my entire of, medical history digital. whether it's prescriptions doctors what i went through everything tests go everything's that, in this unified and it's platform. a beautiful experience right mm. so the problem with medical health records is okay going forward i can put my records here but backwards what do i do so there's this beautiful gmail integration you just give access to your gmail it scrapes your gmail and pulls out all the reports yeah, if you give ho nahi pata tha dekho ye europe mein nahi ho pata the beauty of india is like ha le lo gmail access <laughs> but you have to give it you have to consent it fair right? enough the other the other thing is if you don't give it ha huh. it's so simple to upload your record so what you do is you get a usually a pdf on your email um from a diagnostic lab or a whatsapp with your report right a pdf for the whatsapp ha huh. you forward that pdf to the ek care whatsapp number from your mobile number it automatically maps your mobile number to your name and puts the record in your locker or you email the report to your mobile number at aka.care forward that email to your email number at aka.care and it maps it to your so this is like an infrastructure play actually right? complete this infrastructure business. eventually they'll go into other things like um sort of medicine delivery or or monetization through that and insurance and all in of those in the peer kon hai fir like who who they competing with not not got a peer yet who's doing the full stack complete full stack How will they monetize? They'll charge the user for the service. We'll see. They're right now going through trials with um, delivery of medicine, um, and so B two B business be also can actually could be. But they have lots of data and lots of people using the seamlessness of. What are the four questions you ask a company doing say twenty thirty lakhs in month? Uh, what four questions will you ask? You can pick a category. Up category, but other koi to get I, a sense. I would say I'll, uh, forget what I asked the hmm. company. Hmm. I'll. Tell you what I ask myself, and that leads to the question to the hmm, company, hmm. right? One, fifty percent of my decision is on the founder. Who is this person? Why will they fight through tough times, and why does he or she have a right to win in this space, right? So, I had a right to win in Ayurveda because of my family legacy. DevOps have a lot of problems. B two B SaaS has a lot of problems, but I didn't know how to do that. So my right to win was here. So fifty percent there. Is, 20% on market size and this is why I get a lot of questions to founders as well. We make a lot of mistakes sometimes building businesses or investing in businesses that we like. What I have to look for as an investor is okay I like this product fine that's great but from here is there a big enough market for this to hyperscale because I need to see venture sell return. So I see exponential growth or very large growth from here. So is there a market for this to grow 3x 5x 10x over a period of time not tomorrow but is there a market enough for this to grow? And for example I'm gluten free and sugar free, right? I don't have gluten or sugar. I want to invest in a brand that's both gluten free and sugar free, 
because the market for gluten free plus sugar free consumers in india i would say is less than a million people in this country yeah. we even know the first question is gluten kya hota gluten hai gluten kya hota hai right so that's that's the second thing and then the third thing is the standard business economics teams or revenue growth profile cross margin bottom line profile customer acquisition cost repeat rate what's the team how is the team etc so 30% on that so 50% on founder we dig deep into why is the person doing it what's their motivation how gritty will they be 20% on market size where does the market grow from here and then 30% on the standard business questions what's the revenue what's the growth velocity what's the margin profile what channels will you use to grow you know this is not that? very different from public market investing i'd like to say uh, of course there is a huge advantage that you have access to data but the, here's the truth right i've been public market investing for a while now um started in 2007 right actively like that's all i do and people don't trust the data um so it's not like just because i have data of a mid sized company in the national stock exchange bomb you trust that data a lot the m- most of the investors that i've met chai mutual funds ho ya fii's ho they're trying to spend time on the management ki management chore hai ki nahi hai agar chore hai kitna bhi solid business hoga i will not give money to that business uh, and that's of course you're not looking for chore but you're looking for competence you're looking for grit but it's very similar that the people running the business is the business right a company is basically what a bunch of people trying to do something that's why i said early stage 50% of the decision on the person love it love it to abhi abhi check size kya hai aapka roughly 3 million type ha 1 to 5 million so okay i want to understand something first context um venture capitalists need venture scale businesses for them to exit let's understand this uh businesses such as say spotify for example um have two major costs apart from employees one is uh, licensing the actual music correct uh, and second um actually being able to distribute it throughout the world right which involves a bunch of things it could be branding could be customer could be bunch of things now to do this the chicken and egg problem you cannot make revenue before you have the platform especially in two sided uh platforms like this therefore you need money and exponential money once you have product market fit i got 50 million users 100 million users 200 million users and so on so forth once that is there users come iske liye paisa chahiye now all these milestones are divided into let's say capital uh, milestones ki they raise certain capital the person who got in first is able to exit or sell to another investor at say the third round of capital raise correct. and therefore make an exit correct another way to make an exit is the company makes enough profit they buy it back this is kind of rare um and the third exit is exit is i hate that word though uh, that the company ipos and you're able to sell it to the public fourth exit is strategic sale ha theek hai mna strategic That's what we sale had, right excellent strategic sale perfect fourth exit is that now isme agar venture scale nahi hoga you're taking super high risk so therefore um, maybe 8 out of 10 of your investments will go to zero two of them do extremely well they have to not only make up for those eight losses they actually have to reach such a good that they return the fund so the fund is valued at 1 billion at least 1 billion aa jana chahiye on a period of 5 to 7 years correct ye vc ka um इंसेंटिव uh, है उसका कॉन्टेक्स्ट है फाउंडर का कॉन्टेक्स्ट है ये कितना बढ़िया बिजनेस है ये देखो मेरा कितना अच्छा है सो नाउ दीजी एग्जैक्टली वॉट यूर से एवरी बिजनेस या is not actually one that needs external capital right and absolutely there are enough founders who have gone to and said you don't need me you're doing a fantastic job Perfect. do it yourself correct correct i totally agree so now the to align the incentives what to become venture scale and possibly get venture funding here is the problem the founder um has to grow really 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 fast to be one of those two people out of the 10 people in the portfolio correct yahan pe misalignment kabhi kabhi ho jata hai na iske bare mein mujhe mujhe batao yeah so so look i think it honestly boils down to what your ambition is and what you want to do there's nothing wrong in building a business that grows 20% per annum and you get to where you want to get over a longer period of time or you don't even want to reach that scale right and, and there are a lot of people who say i'm happy with my business i'm running it i'm making good profits and i'm enjoying what i'm doing right now um if you are going the venture out i think what's really important is to have a honest frank conversation with your investors and shareholders whether they're angels vcs private equity funds and before taking on an investor understand that your goals with the business and their goals are matching right because if you want to grow at 20% and they want to grow at 100% and you take their money it's a big problem right so i think what's not talked about enough is who you are taking money from because a relationship with an investor at least in the private markets 
is a long term relationship it's not a marriage but it's a very serious dating relationship right because it lasts minimum 5 years but it can go up to 10 12 years as well and so a founder once told me this beautiful thing he said take on an investor that you can have lunch or dinner with once a month for the next 10 years because you will have to do that right so uh i would say that alignment of interest of shareholders stakeholders is critical so that both one you're on the same side and two are seeing the future in the same way as well and if it's not aligned you have to have that frank conversation be open because taking money is easy but using that money executing correctly and then getting that money out or exiting that position is the more difficult part yeah and it's a, it's a difficult thing to do man getting scale or getting profit or doing an ipo um, i had another question on this there's a bunch of companies which are ipoing um one i noticed that their growth now see uh, my perspective is of public markets very different ki public kharid raha hai versus a discussion between two private totally people totally different it's completely totally different. different so we can be a little more harsh on this correct in private see it's two people deciding so it's fine aap kuch bhi karo but when you say public things change right so my question is two things i noticed a bunch of ipos won't name them one is that growth was flat um for the last few years and i'm looking at ebitda margins or ebitda and second is most of it is an offer for sale which means the business is existing people are exiting and the exist i know you know but i'm just saying it for the Correct. viewers ki the money is not going to the company it's going as an exit and people are leaving or maybe investors so is that is that right if most of it is an fpo sorry fpo keh raha hu most of it is an ofs and the growth was a little bit little bit stagnant like don't you think that's a bit wrong you yeah, look i think the amount of questions and what you're subject to in the public market it's very interesting right when our private companies are are going there what they have to then think about and how they have to sort of work to position the company as well um on ofs i would say that look the reality is you have to accept that every investor has the time horizon and when an investor reaches the end of their time horizon i don't think there is an issue in selling right because you've reached a time horizon you have a bunch of stakeholders who invest in your fund you have to give them back the money etc all of that um if it's only an ofs then the retail investor can question what is my money being used for right is there going to be further growth etc so i think the some intelligent uh, sort of structures would be do an ofs plus a primary infusion and and give that story of what you're going to use the money for i have no issue in ofs because at the end of it you have to exit that position at some no, point but 80 or 90% ofs is a problem yaar maybe maybe matlab it should be maybe part part or this Haan, some what the part is now public market investors like you know better no i mean 10 20% maybe max i guess but uh, i think what's interesting is how our economy has changed worldwide amazon naukri in sab ko aap dekhoge they went ipo very dude they were they were out of garage man when they ipoed so there was a lot of meat left for the public markets to grow Uh, I thought that was very interesting, right? Now the uh, sorry, the private market funding has extended a lot, and there's a lot of liquidity. Private market. But think about the flip it. side. Ha, right? Correct. Think ha. about the way retail investors, public market investors are, and what they're used to. Would you be okay giving them a seed or a Series A risk today in India? No, absolutely not. That was the kind of risk that was taken on these companies back then, right? Um. So I actually think it's okay that. uh look i agree with you that there has to be some juice left for the public market investors to also make their return that i 100% agree with but the risk that a vc takes is not the risk a public market investor can take and i it's a simple conversation that i have with my dad all the time he's like you're investing on a presentation like yeah <laughs> the guys barely done anything yeah, yeah yeah what are you thinking right um and and that's not fair risk to give to retail investors no no love that there are a lot of people i think right now who want to start their own brands their own companies how should they be thinking firstly i'll say one thing there is no better time to start up than now in our country right i have been part of this ecosystem since 2013 it's my 10th year back in india and i can say that the level of maturity that we've reached as an ecosystem the amount of support help capital and infrastructure that we have today just did not exist in 2016 17 when i started right absolutely so see change in the last 5 to 7 years um what do you need to do to start your brand i'll just talk to you about maybe a few steps right um and obviously this is not enough and there'll be lots more details so don't think that i'm saying it's an easy process it's a very very hard process um the first thing you need to do is sort of 
identify the problem your solution and then you're right to win in that solution right that's the first thing second thing is develop a product then that actually you test you trial you create you sample with customers and then eventually you launch and you manufacture etc all of that and you also ip protect right whether it's a trademark or a patent or whatever you have step number 3 would be to launch a brand um and so you go through the entire process of vision mission statement personality qualities traits of the brand and then eventually create a logo and a style guide and then step number 4 is begin right so begin would be create a website start some marketing across facebook and google ecosystems includes youtube and instagram list your product on marketplaces and kick off the journey after this step number 5 would be operations logistics and you get the order that's not where it ends you got to dispatch the order got to communicate to the customer got to get the product to reach the customer got to check that the customer is happy with the product if they returns you deal with the returns step number 6 is retention then the great part about d2c at least e-commerce enabled business is you have data names numbers email addresses and addresses and products the customer has bought in the offline channel there's lots of layers there is super stockist distributor retailer and then end customer for the brand right you get this live data as an e-commerce brand use the data effectively to cross sell upsell the customer and bring them back and then the seventh step is scale right team culture large i call this like the subway effect okay here's what here subway is the sandwich so when we were kids we'd go to subway we like do dear 50 rupees ka subway had launched this ham sandwich 50 rupees, rupees. Okay. um i don't remember that 50 rupee ham sandwich uh, so it was promotional, promotional to get people to come to because it is a cold sub sandwich no one gave a shit about it right hame to garam khana chahiye burger chahiye this was already established but like a sandwich no one would buy uh and this was zirakpur uh sorry panchkula chandigarh and uh, so we went there 50 ru- the only reason it go would be like 25 rupees 25 ru- mayank could pay 25 i'd pay 25 <laughs> we'd share that one sandwich it was a sandwich there were there were two ham slices in it and that was it and we thought this is not tough to do um maybe we should start a ham sandwich business but i realized making the sandwich is probably the easiest part everything around it right the branding the logistics um the franchisee agreements the royalty calculation uh the inventory and a hundred other things hiring all of that is the actual business to make it sustainable and it, before you before you say anything everyone trying to start a brand starts with their sandwich ki yaar main sandwich to badhiya bana lunga business to ban jayega but dude there are hundred other things and you mentioned them so beautifully no one has idea about branding no one has about logistics what about operations it's crazy dude so i would say that <coughs> i've met 1500 founders in the last one and a half years um maybe 3 400 of them are d2c founders um everyone builds good products in india i would say that log effort lagate hain product mein right but just having a good product is not enough you got to do the other bells and whistles around it and execute to build a business a good product is not a business correct one question i forgot to ask and that is uh, going back to i have this obsession with this amount you've made but all that money that you've made see you can't use it aapko it doesn't even seem like you want to spend it anywhere uh, you're passionate about what you do and that's beautiful uh, but where do you invest that money do you invest it in public markets where does it go yeah so i think after we completed the exit our family actually uh, i i sort of steered my dad into starting to think about diversification of asset classes until then we were pretty much in fds real estate and gold and that's about it um and so we actually created a structure where we diversified our risk profile as a family and everything from debt to angel investments right so obviously fds government bonds mlds um going down to even venture debt instruments right um and then from a equity perspective mutual funds direct exposure to listed company but would 30% be equity what were um, the percentage of so equity so we started with 70% debt and 30% equity makes sense and now we have moved to 50 50 oh interesting we moved to 50 50 do you change right? allocation like if markets fall right now is there some balance happening so we happening? do a once in two weeks meeting um as a family my so this dad is proper structure yeah, do you dad, have investment professional my dad my brother and i and our advisor okay um once in two weeks we do a meeting and we plan what we're going to do if there's some some instrument which we have invested in that's coming to a liquidity event then how do we plan to reallocate it etc all of that it's it's become structured um and i think i'm really happy it's become structured any bad uh, investments that you want all to tell me time. tell me all the time no, don't all tell me time. the angel ones public markets mein debt kuch aisa kharab hua kabhi debt abhi tak kharab nahi hua hai 
बट माई ब्रादर वेंट हार्ड ऑन द एल आई सी आई पी ओ ओ इंटरेस्टिंग वी डेंट डू सो वेल इनिशियली तो हाँ वो वो नहीं चला बट ठीक है होता रहता है एंड वट अबाउट एक्विटी एंड एनी बैड एपल्स देर on a on a individual perspective ha you do individual stocks yeah, right ha individual stocks i don't do Ki index personally. fund hai kya i i i i do my brother's more excited about the individual stocks so he manages that i i do more mutual funds and pms strategies and stuff like that um because i don't have the bandwidth to track um and i am tracking private companies and it's not fun also for you i can tell right like it's not something that you want to spend your it energy on it could be on. it could be fun i just don't i hate doing something average right like in the private markets i would say i spend a lot of my time on it i have access to better stuff than other people in the private mar- in the public markets if i don't spend time on it i don't give it the due effort people like you spend so much more time and obviously you'll do better than me yeah, so i might sure. as well give it to you to do it for that's me that's not right? true yeah you can give me the money but <laughs> no but, I, but yeah. I'm, i'm genuinely saying right in all seriousness yeah. correct so i accept that i'm not good at something and that's fine w- what's your what's your what are your thoughts about trading and be completely uh, like uh, i don't have the wherewithal to do it ha uh, because too too uh, intense for me i don't have the um, the bandwidth or not the bandwidth the the stomach to be able to see that up and down on a daily basis i don't have the stomach for it yeah, but people who do that i mean great for them which is not for me Yeah, completely makes sense. I don't think most people should trade anyway. I think investing is for everyone. Trading isn't. It's for uh, some people. So yeah, I, I I completely agree. We have a rapid fire section as well. <laughs> Bring me the questions. Okay. So one one two two lines rapid fire. First question: What is your right now? Your current unfair advantage. Uh, I'm an ex-founder, and so I connect with founders maybe. Better than other VCs do because I have context. Makes sense. Give me three D two C brands to look out for. You've already told me like ten since he's been at the office, but give me three to look out for. Hmm. Uh, I would say very early stage. Okay. Stuff that you may not have heard of, right? Because stuff that you've heard of, uh, I think it's Snitch is one that just came on Shark Tank. It's yeah. a company that is run by a very close friend of mine. Are you um, an investor in Snitch also? Now, when he takes the money with the shark round, maybe hopefully he'll take my money. Um, I just love it because it's a bootstrap business, um, and it proves that you can do it completely bootstrap. I had an amazing conversation recently with a founder called Aditya, who runs a brand called Pital, taking forward the Punjabi Thatera legacy. Ah, huh. um, it's a home kitchen company basically, um, and he's a 23 year old founder, and he's doing very well. Um, so I would say that's uh, brand number two, and. um i'm really excited about uh the pet space um so i want all of you to look out for new brands in pet in d2c and tell me which ones i only know heads up for tails like i don't know any that goal investor is an investor you are oh interesting uh, but i'm looking for actually specific brands now right heads up for tails is now a platform with a store and all right. of that um, looking for specific brands because i think that category will blow up Why do you think so? In one line, what's your thesis? Um, adoption has changed significantly after COVID, um, and as an economy becomes wealthier and wealthier, um, people start adopting pets much more. Um, numbers are showing it, and I've seen it anecdotally also around me as well. Interesting. Okay. Uh, two book recommendations. This is. Yeah. So how I almost blew it. Siddharth Rao's book on um, <clears throat> Indian early Indian tech founders um, pretty much shows you that all they almost blew it and then they didn't. um and from 0 to 1 is is one that's standard but chal i'll give you one more huh. purple car by seth godin it's the best okay. marketing book ever why did ever. you like it it's the best marketing book i've read ever simple to the point yeah, and and like the title says it all right it's simple but not simple hmm. right it's it's simple but why why it actually worked okay interesting and uh, what's your favorite holiday destination uh alibag we have a family home just outside of bombay oh you do uh and been going there for the last 20 years i've never seen ali bag um it's we'll we'll go together soon <laughs> which is so i was fishing uh, for that ha huh? cool uh, <laughs> it's uh, just a 15 minute speed boat or one hour normal catamaran ride from bombay um and it's a different world. why is it good because it's peaceful it's it's like you're one hour from bombay but you're in a village um and you have a beach and you have just calm so i spent a lot of time there after we sold dr vedya Hmm. Trishan actually moved there for two and a half months. Oh wow! They planned to move to London, but second wave, so we moved to Ali Bag. <laughs> to Ali Bag, it's beautiful, super. And uh, what's the legacy you want to leave behind? Do you want to leave a legacy? I don't think about this. 
it's a long way to go <laughs> love that answer <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming here dude I love this I learned a lot I think this is great and my pleasure hopefully you guys enjoy the conversation as well and thank you thank you Pratik for having me it's been a pleasure